Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. It's Thursday. Your love is great for me. Dang, I messed that up, but I'm not redoing the intro, so thanks for tuning in to Hot News. We got all of the great hot news for you today. After we remind you of today's video sponsor, which is UFD Deals. You see, if you're trying to buy things on the internet for your computer parts, why don't you go to our website? We have the best tech deals there. You click on the link, it sends you to the website where the deal is. We make a kickback, you save money, everybody wins. And with Prime Day being over, I'm sure you're regretting some deals that you didn't get, like us with Amazon accidentally marking down thousands of dollars worth of cameras to $95 each and then honoring the sales. People got a $13,000 lens for $95. My heart hurts and I'm sad. And if I would have been paying attention to our website, I would have known it existed, but alas, I'm a failure. You trusted me. I you. Also in a different time zone, so it makes things weird. Anyways, the link for that's in the video description. Let's talk about today's top of the list, which is Intel discussing their strategy during Fortune's Brainstorm Tech in Colorado yesterday. Their CEO, Bob Swan, gave a discussion surrounding everything that's happening with the company, including the fact that they're five years late on 10 nanometers, and they're also expecting to hit seven nanometers within the next two years. So one of the reasons that Bob Swan gave for not hitting the 10 nanometer target five years ago was that they were too aggressive. At a time where it gets harder and harder, we set a more and more aggressive goal. From that, it just took us longer. Which is weird, because they've been like giving us the same thing for the past decade, and that only accounts for half of the time that they never got there. Aggressive doesn't really describe the style to which Intel has actually been pursuing the market. But nevertheless, one of the big issues with it is that they were trying to hit 2.7 times transistor density on 10 nanometers over 14 nanometers, and that's really difficult to do. Moore's Law 2.0 this new node, this 10 nanometer node, we said, let's try 2.7. However, one of the key advantages that would come from that 2.7 times transistor density would mean that Intel's 10 nanometers would have roughly the same transistor density of AMD's current Zen 2 lineup, which is on seven nanometers. So Intel actually would have the better process in that instance. However, the difficulty is that they can't get it done. I mean, they're just barely releasing 10 nanometer chips at this point, five years past when it was supposed to be developed. However, that doesn't mean that they've stopped developing the other processes with they're supposed to be bringing out seven nanometers on 2021. It's supposed to be this like coinciding 10 nanometer and seven nanometer plan that they're gonna be rocking out over the next few years. Whether or not that comes to desktop chips remains to be seen, especially since we're not supposed to get 10 nanometers on Intel desktop until the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. So it's a weird mix up. Like we're supposed to get Coffee Lake refresh, refresh later this year, which is the 9900KS. And then Comet Lake is supposed to be next year. And that's still supposed to be 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus. And that's going to go up to 10 cores and 20 threads. So like, this is not hitting us for quite some time, but Bob Swan also said that seven nanometers should be at least two times the transistor density of 10 nanometers. So it should be nine point, wait, no, it should be, can't do, it should be 5.4 times better than the current 14 nanometer setup, at least with regards to transistor density. Hopefully this happens, but dang, it's been like, AMD is gonna be on seven nanometers EUV plus by the time Intel launches seven nanometers. So we'll see. But also Intel quietly launched their new flagship lineup of Cascade Lake SP with uh, dropping 28 core Xeons out of nowhere with a base clock speed of three gigahertz, which is a 300 megahertz increase over the previous 28 core. And it's gonna have a higher TDP, higher price, all of that good stuff. But Intel actually dropping new flagships without really telling anybody, they just exist now. I made this for you! Speaking of new flagships, AMD's new Zen 2 architecture uh, has required some sacrifices on certain motherboard manufacturers because they didn't predict that AMD was actually gonna stick to their word and keep everybody on the same socket for a really long time. And so some of the BIOS chips that are on older motherboards haven't been able to keep up. They either had to drop support for older ones or choose not to support the newer ones. It's a crazy thing. MSI is actually rectifying this. We talked about this in previous hot news, but now it is official. The boards are gonna be called Max boards. So basically like the B450 Tomahawk Max. That indicates that they've increased the BIOS chip size 
size, and it should have support for everything that you would want support for, including RAID, which was one of the features that had to get dropped on the smaller uh, BIOS chips for those motherboards. Being a small, AIs have learned how to compute Rubik's cubes really quickly. The University of California just created an artificial intelligence system that can solve a Rubik's cube in 1.2 seconds, which is like a third of the human world record of 3.4 seconds. However, that is not the fastest Rubik's cube solve that's ever been done because there was one from MIT where they got it done in 0.38 seconds. There's a video of it happening anyways, but it's kind of cool that more companies are developed or more universities are rather developing this AI processing stuff that can solve things that are difficult for us mere mortals. Being mere mortals, Nintendo Switch, I'm sure there's a game that deals with mortality on the Switch. Anyways, as we mentioned, when the Switch Lite came out, it was kind of indicated that Nintendo would be upgrading or rather changing the SoC that comes on the regular Nintendo Switch and not just giving the Switch Lite all of the improvements. And it has turned out to be true. The new SoC, which is likely on a 16 or 12 nanometer process by Nvidia, is likely going to be the same exact performance in the Tegra X1 architecture, but they're going to put all all of the benefits of shrinking down from 28 nanometers to a smaller node into the power efficiency settings. And now they're quoting that the new switch can go from four and a half to nine hours of battery life, up to nine hours of battery life, whereas the original switch was up to six and a half. So the base level is just a couple hours off what the max was on the original. I feel like this is a good way that Nintendo can upgrade the switch and not really piss off old owners. You're not getting a lot of extra performance. You're just getting increased battery life, which I mean, battery degrade anyway, so go pick up a new switch if you want new batteries. Do you like space, Sonny? Well, guess what? Because of the anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the first man to land on the moon is happening, Hulu is going to be adding NASA TV to their lineup. So in case you have a Hulu subscription and you like to watch ads while also paying them, NASA TV is going to be available on July 19th. But let's keep on space for a little bit because there have been some breakthroughs coming in and how certain companies, research agencies are going to be trying to search for extraterrestrials because typically uh, such things as SETI, which is the search for extraterrestrial, an extraterrestrial intelligence, I don't have even terrestrial intelligence right now, those have been based on radio waves and using radio telescopes to try to identify signals that might be coming through. However, an investor, Yuri Milner, has decided that is one part of the strategy and there could be other things that aliens might be trying to correspond with us, which such as as light pulses in Morse code that were completely missing by only scanning radio frequencies. So Breakthrough Listen and Veritas, which is the Very Energetic Radiation Imaging Telescope Array System, are going to be partnering together to examine light pulses that might be coming from the sky to advance our search for aliens. Also, I just want to apologize for anybody who's hearing some like background noise. They're doing construction in our building and there's no time of day where they're not just drilling into the so if you want a video, this is what you have to deal with. Thank you. And I spoke about Amazon Prime Day earlier at the beginning of the video, but now let's talk about them a little bit more because Amazon has come out and said that today's or this year's Prime Day was the largest shopping event in Amazon history. So even with the company strikes that were happening, even with the controversy, even with a lot of people saying that there were no good deals that you couldn't typically get otherwise, Amazon's saying that they broke records, yo. Do you care about Dragon Ball Z? Okay, now do you care about the video games? Okay, but what about the new one, Kakarot? Are you interested in that? Well, apparently you don't just get to play as Goku. That's one of the new things that's coming out. They are going to have other playable characters with other storylines, and that's gonna be great. I'm excited, it comes out early next year. And then Gears of War 5 is supposed to be the largest franchise entry yet, and Fun fact, no loot boxes for monetization. So they're not gonna be doing microtransactions in that way according to loot boxes. There could still be other microtransactions, but no loot boxes, no gambling, yay! That's what I like in my adult games, no gambling. Not my adult games, my games made for adults. You know what I meant, okay? Stop it, okay? Bow chicka bow wow. And then one of the games that I'm most excited for, Persona 5 Royal, has added some new mechanics or at least revealed what they're going to be like, such as battle touch ranks and then leveling ranks. It's all good. You can check the link in the description if you care at all about Persona 5 Royal. It's coming out in October in Japan and then should be spring next year for us weebs here in the West. 
And I'm sure you guys have seen everybody who's been aged on Facebook and Twitter and all of that kind of stuff using the Face app, which just kind of uses AI processing to kind of show you what your future is going to be like if you don't smoke or drink or get fat, just like, you know, if you, which I mean, it's not gonna happen. Like, nobody's gonna look that good. It's basically assuming that you're gonna have the best future possible to hit that point, which, come on. Anyways, there's been some concern over the privacy regarding FaceApp and how they're handling your data. There's been some reports that have come out saying that they are giving all of your pictures in your gallery to Russian hackers because apparently FaceApp is developed by Russian developers. And then there's other concerns saying that you are giving them permission to sell your face as a stock image to other companies. and. On the one hand, that might be true. However, some of them are less egregious than one would think. They are uploading your images to the cloud, but that's because they are using cloud-based AI processing. I, for one, when I tested the app, was amazed at how quickly it was able to do it, and I knew it wasn't using my phone's processor because my battery life wasn't chowing down really all that hard. So they're clearly offloading the processing in order to get the filters to apply, but that could also mean that they're storing it in the cloud. The developer has said that they're not really doing that, and they're not really violating your privacy and come on you agreed to it anyways but uh just in case you are worried at all about that maybe don't upload your picture but then that also doesn't stop your friends from doing a picture of you and then sending it to you and then this company has access to your picture copyright laws are weird and russian hackers are everywhere it's the moral of the story and then in case you care about uh, what's the, this called? Uh, camera stuff. DJI announced the Ronin SC, which is made for mirrorless cameras, up to 1.1 kilograms of payload. It is a really cool gimbal. It has features that I wish was on our actual Ronin, such as locking the freaking gimbals. That would be great, wouldn't it? Huh? 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 Why don't you give that to us, to people who pay double the price? Whatever, DJ, I'm done with you. And then, in case you want to uh, have ease of access to pre-built PCs, NZXT just rolled out their build website, or BLD site, which allows you to just quickly order pre-builds, including up to getting them the same business day or shipping out the same business day if you order be for 11 a.m. Pacific time. And one of the cool things about this is that they're actually not doing too much of a markup on these builds. And I think it's something like you're spending 30 to $80 more based on the PC part picker list versus what you're getting on the NZXT site. So you're paying 30 to $80 for assembly. That is not bad whatsoever. This is not a paid spot. I just thought it was kind of cool in case you don't want to build your next PC and you want NZXT to do it for you. But you know what you're probably doing? Spending too much time on Netflix and that's why you can't build your own PC. Stop being so Pathetic. Cancel your Netflix subscription, okay? Just like everybody else, because Netflix has reported its first net subscriber loss in the US and it missed its global subscriber predictions, which has led to its stock to tank. But at the same time, uh, it's inevitable that this is gonna happen. They're only gonna continue to kind of slightly hemorrhage subscribers as new stuff like Disney Plus and Hulu and all of the other competitors are rolling out. And now Netflix has to transition from being big fish in a big pond to adequately sized fish against other adequately sized. Basically, they have to learn how to actually compete at this point because uh, otherwise, I mean, previously they were just kind of winning and now you get to see what the company is made of. So let's find out. And then in case you want a Pixel phone, apparently to celebrate Google Fi's fourth birthday, they have 50% off deals on the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL with the Pixel 3 starting at $500, which is only $100 more than the Pixel 3a. Quite good, quite good. So in case you want that, links in the description for that. But you know what else is that? This end of hot news, I'm done. Check out UFD deals if you're trying to save money because uh, you know, I didn't give you enough good deals in this episode. I'm just, I'm chucking them out to you. You just save money, people. Okay, that's what I care about most. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode of Hot News. Talk about all of your favorite things down below. Talk about news that maybe we haven't covered yet. Let us know what, we, what you want to see on this channel. Curious, get subscribed, hit the notification bell, support us on Patreon. I love you so much too. Goodbye. Copyright laws are weird, and Russian hackers are everywhere. Allegedly. It's the moral of the story.